my friend, my friend, do you have troubles? Is your website just a white screen? Are your forms not working? Do you need some help? Oh, yeah. Oh, you need a plug-in, maybe a dev. We're solving all your WordPress blues on WP Black. That is the intro. That means it's ready for WP Water Cooler's WP Blob. So, Bridget, how's it going? It's going great. How's it going, Jason Tucker? I'm doing good. I want to make sure I don't do the exact same intro every single time just to throw you off because you're always like, <laughs> well, Jason's I about I to say, do, 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 and do, 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 do. Yeah, so <laughs> I can totally hit play and just do my normal intro, but I am not doing that today. Okay. Bridget, how's it going? It's going great. I was uh, inspired by our show last uh -oh. week, and I found that there is one plugin called Latest Catch <laughs> that will allow you to embed the very last Periscope if you use catch.me, but only the last one. They're That's not... lame sauce. I know. I mean, now that I work for developers, I'm a little bit less like, you suck because this plugin sucks. And, uh, but it would be nice if you could put the short code and then use the catch URL so that you could have a gallery where you could put the right Periscope in there. So yeah. that's what I did on Saturday, experimenting with WordPress plugins. That's lame. I, I... I hate. I don't want to say. I don't want to be mean now. No, I, I will totally be the mean one. I I think the idea of not being able to have access to all the things that you're you know putting out there on the internet also on the web just frustrates me to no end. Like Periscope doesn't have like a a page on that you can go to that shows you the archives of all of your posts. No, you have to use Catch.me, which That's will stupid. do that. And, that's stupid, though. I mean, it, I mean, that's cool that Catch can do it. So what latest Catch does is it just pulls the last one from your, it, you put in your username, and then you right. just put in the brackets Catch. But I feel like if they just tweaked it a little bit, did some extra work on that, you know, yeah, you could use the the URL of the Catch. The Catch has a URL. I. I'm not really sure why they decided not to do that or if just some weirdo API thing. But I was really, really surprised that there was only one plugin in the repo for embedding That's crazy. Periscope. That's crazy. And uh, Ryan, who uh, works for the Boutique Real Estate Group, and um, uh, was using it Saturday. And uh, he, I think it's great, exactly what we said for showing the view. He yep. said, for only $55 million, this oceanfront view could be yours. And I'm not even exaggerating. It was $55 million. <laughs> and I'm brought to you live by the $700 yeah. phone that's in my hands right now. So I noticed what he did was he he saved his Periscope to his camera roll. Yep. And then uploaded it to Instagram. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, still, don't. Instagram only gives you 15 seconds. Yeah, don't be putting that vertical video on YouTube. You do I that. Looks, I, I, I make fun that of you. Looks lame. Yeah. I, I make fun of you when you do that. People that do that, that's just that's just crazy. But it was a bitch in Periscope. That was a perfect. Well, I bet. Periscope. I bet. I bet they it psh. I don't know. So anyway, if you if you have a hankering and you want to enter her plug in Palooza at WordCamp Orange County, they are accepting plugins for their, their contest and there are cash prizes. Not a brand new car, but <laughs> Cash prizes and Word Impress did win last year for WP Rollback, <laughs> which is awesome. If you haven't tried that out, it's amazing. Yeah, how dumb! Oh, this is just I know, wasn't it frustrating? Because just because we were talking about it, well, because if because you know, the course, whole time we've been talking, I've been like digging through the code right I now, know. trying to figure out why the heck. I'm just saying, it's ridiculous. And I tested out, it's and and not only that, but you can't like. Uh, kind of tweak it and say put a bunch of catches on the same thing so it'll get all the catches and only right. one. You yeah. can only have one 
on each post. That it makes no sense. What if I want just the very latest one? Right. I, I don't get it, but, but whatever. I'm trying, I'm trying to be nicer. The softer side of Sears over here. <laughs> oh, Bridget, you cracked me up. Oh, man. So, folks, you in the chat, I see you have, uh, well, we have about nine people in there. That's pretty awesome. 20 total that have came by and said, oh, they're talking about technology. I'm out of here. I'm going to go talk <laughs> about, I'm going to talk about the, the debate or whatever. So um, if you have any questions or anything regarding um, WordPress stuff, writing blog posts, marketing, social media, anything related to getting your posts out there and displaying them and making them the best that they can be, uh, feel free to leave a comment in there. Ask a question if you like. If you have a really good question and you want to just talk about it, feel free to hop in the, in the hot seat here. We have spaces for two more people, so feel free to hop in and say hello, hang out, stay as long as you like. That's about it. <laughs> okay. Well, well, while we're waiting for the awesomeness of questions, uh, one of the things you can do with the text yeah. is you can um, use header stacking. That's what Buffer recommends. Headers. So, so you need it for SEO anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have your H1 tag. That's the title, but that's the box. That, that's the title. So you just leave it like that. And then break up your text with H2 tags. Ah. And then within the H2 tags, well, actually what Buffer does is they do an H2 tag and then immediately an H3 tag. So like you say, Bridget Willard is awesome, H2 tag, H3 tag, she was, she's was she been awesome since 2011. You know, like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like a, kind of like a title and a subtitle so and then, and then your text. Hmm. And then, and then if you do that, it actually helps with your SEO and, See, people don't read. Like a subhead. Exactly, Carol. Just like a like subhead. Like a subhead. Thank you. That's I knew awesome. Carol would figure it out. Um, and there's, yeah, okay. there's plenty of plugins that will do subheads for you. Like, it'll take the title and then yeah. put a subhead below it. So you'll have, like, an extra little yeah. box to fill in um, in your, you know, in your editing window. But, this, but, um, but it's more like, you know, you have all these points you're making in right. your thousand word post. My buddy so, Chris Lemma does that. Break it up. Break it up visually. Also, you can use um, pull quotes. There's a couple of plugins that do pull quotes really nicely. Hmm. Yeah, there, yeah there's um, oh, like pull quotes that aren't tweet, tweets. They're just a, an actual pull quote from whatever it is that you wrote. Yeah. Okay. It's a pull quote. Yeah. Like in a magazine. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like in real life. But we're not talking about a block quote, like the built-in no, block quote. No, not a quoting. block quote. Yeah. You know, like blah, 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 blah. But just nice, text nice, like fancy, right here. nice, fancy, like, smart quote. Like, magazine when you need one? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, Rob, Robbie has a good question. Where do you share your blog posts after you publish them? Yup. This is when I almost wish Oscar Gonzalez was here because he's the affiliate marketer master. <laughs> Uh, not a grouch.com yeah. not a grouch on twitter because he he will say so many more places than me but for sure my number one place is google plus it is not let me down no joke robbie one of my friends was looking for a meatloaf recipe and because she was logged into google and she circled me on google plus my blog post comparing meatloaf to content was on the first page so not bad that's awesome. It's Google Plus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's their game. You play the game, their rules. Right? So number one, Google Plus. I would also share it on um, Twitter several times. What I wouldn't do is share it everywhere all at once. And yeah. my favorite analogy is a food truck. So if you had a food truck and you found a really good corner, that's great. You're getting a lot of traffic. And now you have you can expand your business so you can get two food trucks. You wouldn't put the second food truck at the exact same corner as the first because then you're ignoring all these other territories and audiences that you could have. You want to stagger your fleet throughout the neighborhood and in different times so you can optimize people coming to you to get the best breakfast burrito that ever lived, right? 
Yep. So you would never run your business that way. But people just go, oh, well, I'll just, um, you know, enable publicize and jetpack and then send it all everywhere all at once. Yeah. But what you forget is that your audience is like, dude, I just was on Google Plus and saw this. And then I went to LinkedIn and I just saw it. And then I was on Instagram and I saw it. And then I was on Facebook and I saw it. And then you put it on your Facebook page. And then I saw it on Twitter. Dude, like you're just like, I'm unfollowing you from somewhere because this is not happening in my life. I right. cannot have this. So you want to kind of stagger it out. So what I will do simultaneously, because as much as I love Google Plus, it is a ghost town. Okay, I will admit that I am big enough. Google Plus's biggest fan is Google. Yes, and Bridget Willard. <laughs> so, so what you want to do is, I would definitely do if you were going to do publicizing Jetpack, I would do I would do Twitter and Google Plus. Then, I would do maybe a couple hours later, like at the best time for your Facebook, I do Facebook. Mm. Your page, your yeah. page. Then a couple days later, I would share it from your page. Okay. But not at the same time. Yeah. Now we do that, but this is an event. When you're doing things for an event, it's an oh, all out yeah. place. Yeah. That is the one nuts. thing where all the rules go out the window. If something is a time sensitive, then just throw it out to the internet as much as you can and get it happening. But if it's just like, you know, your latest keys to being social post on listening, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. You just want to just slow. Then so then like maybe two or three days later, she'll share it on LinkedIn, and then you know a couple of days later after that, you can share it on whatever. I don't know what's left. I don't Reddit. I think that's like Nerd Central. But if no. you can do Reddit, Reddit's not Nerd Central though. Yes, the it UI is, is not. crap. Come it's on, it's supposed to be Jason. crap. It's supposed to be crap. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. I tried. To. Wait. So I've seen sites that are way worse than that. And <laughs> oh my god, I've seen sites that are way worse than that. And, and oh yeah, Pinterest. Here, I knew something. I was forgetting. Carol said Pinterest. Yes. Then share it on Pinterest. Sorry. I guess if there's a good photo that's associated with it, and well, there's some way so of. If, if, if I'm say, talking about like, oh, here's Jason's native, latest, you know, code that I wrote about something, something, something. I take a, a cool screenshot oh, of it or well, something. Yeah. And then I'll post it on Pinterest. And then my mom goes, yeah, I guess I'll pin that. Yeah, but okay, code think, is I, beautiful. I, I'm, I, think, I know that it's poetry, I think but the it's thing not that beautiful. I think the thing that we're missing in all of this is that there is a social network for each type of content that goes out there. Yes. Because GitHub would be where you put your code. Yes, exactly. It's, exactly. it's about audience. It, you, you, you hit it. Yep. It's about considering where your audience yep. is and what they want to hear. So LinkedIn is good for business things, but it's not good for my selfie. Right. Instagram is like selfie central. Am I right? <laughs> so, Instagram, that's all it is, is Instagram that. Instagram is selfie central. <laughs> You put if you put as many selfies on Instagram as you, on Facebook as you do on Instagram, your friends are gonna be like, "Dang, you're self-absorbed." <laughs> but if on Instagram you don't put enough pictures, they're like, "Wow, why don't you show your face? Don't you believe in yourself? Don't you think you, think you're beautiful?" <laughs> it's, it's just every platform has a culture, but yeah. But the but the real giants are Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus. Pinterest, and I forgot, and Carol's here, so she reminded me. Pinterest is a huge, huge place. If you are retail, you definitely want to pin from your website. It will email people when prices drop, just like Amazon does. Pinterest has a great search that rivals yeah. Google. They will guide you through um, search. Um, I think Carol said the best time to pin is 6 p.m. And that's what their engineer said. She can correct me in the chat. I'm trying to memorize everything. Everything I know about Pinterest, I learned from Carol Steven, yoursocialmediaworks.com. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, and then you, what, what you want to do is you want to put an image in your post that's beautiful, that's long, like this, yeah. then that's the pinnable one. And then you'll want to like write on it. You know, This is where Canva comes in. Canva is the best thing mm -hmm. to happen to, to my life. It's and I true. pay the twelve ninety nine, and every month my husband says, "What's this twelve ninety nine camera for work?" And you're like, "Cause it's awesome." 
Plus, <laughs> because you don't have to know Photoshop and you don't have to know Adobe Illustrator and you don't have to be a geek. And yep. in fact, they like give you the sizes, the optimal sizes for almost everything. And you just click which we, what you want, upload your picture, put in your text. You can use their yeah. pre-formatted stuff if you want. I, I don't even do that anymore. But if you need something that's a Facebook cover that you're just like, I, I know how to put words together, but I suck at actually making something look halfway decent, which I, well, I guess I'm not good at either of those, but I can go on there and pick one of these things and say go, and then something spits out that's awesome. And I'm like, yes, I, I, des I designed this. And I'm going to put it on my website now. Yeah. So, Bridget. If so, you did a cross stitch of your code, you could put it on. So, like, so one of the things that you were you were just mentioning um, regarding um, Reddit is that uh, Reddit Reddit is actually more than you're thinking. So Reddit isn't just a bunch of nerd stuff. There's plenty of other things that are on there as well. Maybe so, I'll have to try it again then. Yeah. Is it going to die soon? Is it like a waste of my time? No. Uh, they call it the front page of the internet. I mean, I know that that's where all the jokes start, but I'm fine with it. I don't have to be an early adopter on jokes. But this this thing's been around for a long time, so you're no longer an early adopter. Feel free to jump in. The water's <laughs> nice and warm. And you can yeah, I'm an early adopter on Blab, not on Reddit. I'm like, oh, Reddit. Uh, Can they just make it look better? <laughs> So they, you know, they have they have social media stuff on there. If you're interested in that, if you want to learn about coding, there's stuff on there on that. If you want to do WordPress stuff, there's a huge WordPress community that's on there. There's plenty of stuff that's on there. So yeah, go take a look at it. Now the only thing is about 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 Reddit or any of these other places is that you want to you want to make sure that your content is appropriate for the place that you're posting. You wouldn't want to go on like Hacker News and go post your quilting blog post or your video or something on Hacker News because Hacker News is going to look at it and go, that's great. And they're just going to push the down button and be like, eh, I don't care about that. If you go on Reddit and you go into the, you know, um, the, you go on like the Bernie Sanders thing on, on, on Reddit and then you start talking about Donald Trump, well, obviously your content does not match the people that are in there unless you're trying to sort of fight. Or if you go in there and talk about Drupal in the Joomla channel or something like that, then yeah, that'll that'll blow up as well. So okay, this, so it's a better version of LinkedIn groups. Yeah, yeah, because those are poorly moderated so, scams. <laughs> that's true. And and what's nice is most of these, actually, all of these are they're you know they're moderated by volunteers. Well, you know the the people that are on LinkedIn aren't volunteers. They're a bunch of people that are trying to get the word word out about their thing. So, yeah. What else is there? Sorry. So, I told you I had enough opinions for the other nine water cooler people. <laughs> did I make up for it? I think you did. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, other, other places, like, for instance, there's another, you know, like, uh, slide share. You know, you wouldn't want, you'd want to put your, your slides from your slide deck or whatever onto slide share. You wouldn't yeah. go and put them on some other on Twitter or something like that. People are gonna look at it and go, well, I can't even read this thing correctly. Right. So that's why and you always wanna put the thing in the correct place for the correct type of audience. And make sure that you're hitting those audiences at the right time of day. If it's LinkedIn and you're shooting for West Coast people, then post it during the you know lunch of the West Coast or, or one o'clock on West Coast or whatever it is. And you have to play around with those analytics to kind of figure out what's what. So yeah. Yeah, because different people are, I mean, I'll I'll fall asleep at eight nine o'clock. Wake up at ten thirty, and then I have like twenty five notifications. That's when my friends are online. So, yeah. But on Twitter, not so much. But on Facebook, for sure. I mean, yeah. everybody has a different, you know. Then I wake up at five thirty, and I'm hanging out with the East Coast people and the other two people that wake up at five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> No, but SlideShare, that's a good, you know, SlideShare is part of LinkedIn, and that's the more professional thing. Also, you can embed SlideShares into your WordPress blog. And I that that was a, another thing we kind of could have talked about with the video episode last week. Yeah. Because that's another way to repurpose your content. You know, if you're presenting, you really should make your slides available unless it's behind some monetized paywall or yep. something like that. Um, because then you can tweet it out and say, my slides are here. Um, <laughs> right, right. And that's yeah. the other thing is, is doing some cross promotion as well. So if people are more accustomed to looking at LinkedIn and all the people that you typically talk to are on Twitter, 
you can go and say, hey, you know, go check out this thing over on LinkedIn. And then people will go over to LinkedIn from Twitter to go check it out. Yeah. Um, mean, one, thing, one thing regarding the whole images thing, um, hopefully this isn't changing the subject too far, is that, is that you want to make sure that that content is, is good for that particular social network. So if you're posting an image to, say, LinkedIn, there's actually dimensions that are good for LinkedIn. Just like there's dimensions that are great for Facebook, there's dimensions that are great for Twitter, and so on and so forth. Because what ends up happening is if you build an image that's too big, and or it's the wrong it's the wrong dimensions, you know, the social network's smart enough to try to cut off the sides or the top, and then you'll end up with words cut off on the top, words cut off on the bottom, somebody's head cut off on the side. You could have the wrong image for that particular network, and that's where getting really good images that are the right dimensions are key. And the right orientation. Yep. Almost nobody wants anything tall. It's just Periscope yeah. and Pinterest. And Pinterest is saying um, as long as the dimensions are no larger than 236 pixels wide, then that's what um, will help out with getting that image. So it's as long as you want, but no, um, no wider than 250, 236, if not 600 pixels. And it's all about aspect ratios. So once you once you start looking at this and you're like, oh well, if the I want this image to be super huge, well then just make sure that you know you're doing the math correctly and you're getting the aspect ratio the the correct the correct way, or it's just gonna look awful. Yep, seventh grade math paid off. <laughs> yeah, I still look it up. <laughs> well, Canva so has all those pre-sized for you. That's yeah, you use Canva, yeah. and you don't even have to pay for it. You could just use the free one. Yep, it really does so help. I, I put a I put a link to um, Hub's uh, a blog post over on HubSpot where they did the 2016 um, social media cheat sheet. Do you remember? Um, so when, go check um, that out. Remember, Jason, you remember when Facebook let you have a long profile yeah. picture? Yeah, those are the days. Uh huh. And then those little five little things like this. I had yep. a friend. I had a friend called Tweet Pages, and he made these birthday bombs. And so he he let him he let you have it for free, and th there was a coordinated set of five mini images that you uh, could um, download for free, and then you would upload them and tag the person whose birthday it was, and it would show up on their Facebook like that. That's that awesome. Fun. That's awesome. I don't know what made me think of that. <laughs> I was like, what, two thousand nine? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, oh, man. Pistol Crystal in the chat says Google, Google Display remarketing sometimes likes tall ones too. Hmm. But people, we we are wired to look horizontally. The golden ratio is there for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we so. look at screens that are this size. We're so accustomed to looking at it, which is why it's so weird to have somebody walking around taking video like this yeah, when it's like stop. that person must be taking a photo. He's not. There's no way they're taking a video, and then. It ends up, you know, and um, then you see, and then you see it all the time on Facebook, and it's all blurred with the uh -huh. black box, and I'm like, just turn your. But unfortunately, that's actually stuff that people have to do after the fact. They're not. It's not like it's automatically happening. Like no. when you go and upload your video to YouTube like that, YouTube goes, well, okay, I guess I got to do something. You might as well just stick two or three videos next to each other and make them widescreen, just so it'll, it'll actually look halfway decent. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but anyway, so you can. Do your images with uh, headers, you know, yep. and then you can use pull quotes. Those are two image things that you can do. You don't want to do too many images or you're going to have loading issues, right? Yeah. That's... Your clock is totally early. <laughs> um, it's a couple <laughs> minutes early. It's four minutes early. It used to be 15 minutes early when I had to ride the train. <laughs> then we know, oh, you have to be out of the house right now. That was terrible. I didn't oh, want boy. to ride the train again. <laughs> Seven years I rode the train to Santa Ana. It was terrible. Ooh, Car Carol has a good question. So she's asking, what is a good number of images to have on a blog post? Hmm. Well... There's a there there's there's a couple ways to approach this. The the main one is you don't want to have huge images yeah. on your site that are shrunk down using HTML. Like you want to make sure that those images are the appropriate size for the post. So if you want it to be full width, 
they're letting it be full width, but just make sure that the image isn't like 10 times the width and now it's trying to get squished down. Because if you ever go on a website and you'll see the image load up and then you'll see like it like it's like almost like the old school days of like BBSs or, or AOL or whatever. <laughs> and the image is just loading like this. Like an old TV it's, screen. Right. <laughs> so when that happens, you know, you have you have what's happening is the image is being shrunk down using, you know, in the browser and the browser's having to load it up and then it's having to shrink it down at the same time and display it. So the, my approach for, for something like that would be to um, make sure that image is the correct width for the post and then make sure that you have that image size, which most themes are smart enough to do, to have that image size be one of those images so that way when the image loads up, it just loads up 500 pixels wide or 600 pixels wide and you're good to go. But there's also some other niceties that can be tied into this. So um, the folks over at um, like Foo Gallery, for instance, or there's a whole bunch of these light box style um, things where you can click on the image and then the bigger image loads up. Well, that image isn't loaded up until you actually click the image. So a second image would appear and that's the one that's in the light box. So that would be my approach to having like, to making sure that the image is the correct size. So now that you've done that, dealing with the number of images on the post, you know, I've seen it where people will have a, um, they'll have some text, they'll have an image, They'll have some more text, they'll have an image, they'll have some text, they'll have the image, you know, over um, over on the right-hand side where it's word wrapping, the left-hand side word wrapping. That's all fine and good. Um, most of the time, the pages are built in a way that will still allow them to be responsive. So that way, once the page shrinks down in, in width, you'll have it nice and clean and all of the text and images will be all separate. So I don't know what the I don't know what the correct the correct answer is to how many images should be on a post, but I do I will say that if you do have a ton of images on there, make sure you're using something like a CDN. So that way you're able to have optimized images that are nice and fast. They load up quick. They load up locally to the area in which the person is uh, is um, at, and you'll they'll have a good experience. Yeah, I mean it's good to break it up, especially if it's super long. Yeah. Well, if your so. post is super long, I mean, this is a discussion we have a lot. My my new BFF, Matt Cromwell, is a reader. He's a big time reader. Really? Yeah. And everybody that I work with were like history journal. Like Devin Walker was a journalism major. Huh. Who knew? And Matt is a historian and, and Jason is like a historian. I'm like the worst writer of all of them. Very intimidating. Right. And they're like, no, you're not. You're so nice. But I'm, I can look in the mirror and see I have spinach in my teeth. Like, you know, <laughs> just be in reality here. So, because I was a math person, uh, not, a, not a words person. So I see. To even get to 800 is a huge, like, feat. I am mm. really good at 300 words. <laughs> 500 is, like, my kind of comfort zone. But, you know, every once in a while I can go a little farther. But I'm also – an intolerance for reading long things, you know, mm. buffers continuously about 2000 words and they're worth it. But I'll yeah. sit there and I'll go, Oh, what was I reading? I'm not a reader. Like, cause I forget what I was reading. So I like how the images break it up and reinforce what you're reading. Yeah. It's just that it can be an issue. So if you know that your theme has a maximum width of 800, then just size of it 800. And then that should pr pretty much do mm -hmm. your thing. Or you can compress it in that tiny PNG program, right? Yep. Tinypng.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it does help if it's like 2000 words. I, I really feel like it's not me pandering to buffer because I'm not a panderer per se and I have nothing to gain, but they're doing a really good job and they're getting my attention. Cause this is how I read blogs. Mm -hmm. I read the first yeah. sentence and then I read the last sentence and then I decide if the whole thing is worth reading. Wow, really? Yeah, because if you haven't like made your point, I don't mm. want to know what color the sky was or what you were feeling. Mm. What is it that you're trying to say? Get to the point. Like I yeah. see that's just me, right? So right. then if it, or if it's one of my really good friends, I'll be like, Oh, she's writing about the time her dad died. That's so sad. Of course I'm gonna read it, right? <laughs> but I mean, if it's a marketing thing, 
just don't don't keep going on and on and on. You know, like those infomercials where the first 25 minutes is them telling you what they're going to tell you. And then the last five minutes, you finally figure out what the Ginsu knife does. That's <laughs> annoying. I, everybody yeah. has a certain amount of time. So that's why I do. I read the last sentence. And if you can convince me the last sentence, then I start reading backwards. Mm, okay. I read all day long. I have other stuff to say. And you know what? Here's the thing. It's, it's like what I was talking about with meatloaf. Because in my, it's kind of a funny, like a meatloaf is like vlogging because. <laughs> For those of you that have just joined, you're not going to understand any of this. <laughs> Wait, listen, Cheers. everybody you know, <laughs> come on. Everybody you know has a meatloaf recipe. Yep. People, so if you Google meatloaf recipe, there's about 7 million recipes. Yeah. How is this possible when the ingredients are meat, eggs, and, and breadcrumbs? Right. Those are the core you cannot have meatloaf without meat, eggs, and breadcrumbs. But you could put hatch chilies in it. You could use Irish steel oats instead of breadcrumbs. I mean, there are right. so – and my mom makes a birthday cake out of it for my stepdad every year, right? Oh. So he doesn't like cake, crazy person. I don't know how. So he likes that? meatloaf? Yeah. Do they, so put she, the, do they put the candles on meatloaf too? Yeah, she puts mashed potatoes on top like for the frosting. And then decorate with vegetables. It's really oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, anyways, so the thing is, people don't stop making meatloaf because it's overused. That You know, like when you're blogging, you think, oh, I don't have any good ideas. Everybody talks about content marketing. But we all have our own flavor, you know? So I might like somebody's flavor better than somebody else's. Doesn't mean that I don't like meatloaf. I just don't like your meatloaf. Hmm. I totally just tweeted that we're talking about meatloaf in WordPress. No joke. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, I didn't like my mom's meatloaf. Sorry, mom. I didn't. I didn't like meatloaf until I had my aunt's meatloaf, which uses Irish steel oats. It's totally different. Um, and then my my other friend uses mustard powder in it. It's so good. So I'm just saying, like, you can yep. use it with turkey. I mean, you could use wild game, whatever. you. I'm just saying the point is, there's so many ways to make this one thing Yeah. that everybody's, you're always going to have an audience because somebody's going to like the way you write. Right. But I just, when I talk about for me, I like it broken up because I scan and I would yeah. say, and I learned this when I worked in a bookstore, I'd be ringing somebody up and they go, why is this 30% off? And I'm like, it says so on the sign. They're like, where's the sign? It's a huge sign. That you had to walk around in order so to get this is 30. Who would have thought? With you know that ugly staples uh, fluorescent right. 80s colored thing with giant, you know, oh, yeah. those one those ones with the jagged edges and stuff. Yep. And you're just like, seriously, pe people don't read. They don't read, they scan. Yeah. And when yeah. they scan and they find something that they think is worth reading, then they will read it. So yeah, that's uh, that. I I kind of I try to model the the way that um, the way that Chris Lima writes his blog posts, where he breaks them up into digestible chunks. So when you're scrolling through, you're seeing H two, H three, H two, H three, H two, H three. So like if you go look at like this one, uh, collecting video testimonials post, you'll see it's like H two, H three, H two, H three, all the way down the list. Yeah. And bullets. Whoa. Oh, that's another one we didn't talk about. Bullets. It's not an yeah. image, but it's a really good. Yeah. See, I like that. That's probably about 750, 800 words, but you, you get it. You can read mm -hmm. it. You can, you can consume it. Right. Yeah. Huh. Oh, so I saw, I saw a question in the chat was um, regarding uh, CDNs, which was like six tangents ago. So CDNs are a content delivery network, and it's a way in which your images get uploaded not to just one server, but to multiple servers. And those servers, um, they host the file and then will uh, give it, to, you know, they'll, they'll let the person that's on the page download those images from that CDN. And they typically have these things distributed throughout the world. So that way, somebody who's in the UK, if there's a CDN location that's in the UK, they'll go and download those images from there instead of having to go all the way out to Texas or California or whatever to download the image. Um, it's also, um, let's see here, it must have been like five or six episodes ago, but I'll, I'll kind of recap it a little bit, where we talked about um, limitations within browsers and how many times 
a particular um, a particular domain can be referenced while all the things are downloading on the page. And so if you have more domains, not all the domains, but a little bit more of the domains uh, downloading those images, they'll end up downloading in, in a faster rate. So you'll be able to get them all downloaded and displayed on the page. So um, yeah, the two, the two CDNs that are out there is um, the one that comes built into Jetpack is called Photon, and that's hosted by Automatic, WordPress, blah, blah, blah. And then the other one is MaxCDN, and MaxCDN's a, a great, great place. Uh, there, they do, the, the cost is really low, and things just work out really, really well. I have to step away for just one second. Okay. My dogs are going crazy outside. Well, um, <laughs> it's the Jason Tucker show. He explained it to me like I have a Fiesta and there's only five seatbelts. So if you have a bunch of friends that are going to a party, you have to go and pick them back up because you can only have a certain amount of things. So if, if I'm driving, I can only have four other people with me. So I have to keep making trips. That's why you have a content delivery network or whatever. Yep. The dogs heard about the meatloaf. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. It's my, uh, my I don't know what, yeah, there's Chloe. I, I don't know what is going on outside, but every every Thursday I end up having to uh, close. Last time it was close, Disneyland, something. I have to close the, close the shop down downstairs, make sure no one uh, tries to take my dogs or anything. And, yeah, it's always fun. So let's see here. So, um so the uh, the the kind of the whole the whole uh, idea behind this particular topic was trying to find other ways to make your post look better mm -hmm. while also having great content. And yeah. if you're going to be writing great content, then you should at least dress it up a little bit and uh, making sure that things look you know yeah. things look nice. Well, I have some more suggestions. Yeah, let's do it. Um, first of all, like we talked about last week, embed your video. Yeah. I'm going to start doing this with my guru minutes because I realized I really wasted a big opportunity by not putting them individually on my blog. Another thing you could do, and we do this for clients, is embed their slides from SlideShare. Oh, wow. Which you can do that with the WordPress shortcode that SlideShare will give you. Um, another thing you could do is embed an infographic. Infographics are, are nice. You, you don't have to make one. Canva does have infographic templates, by the way. But people love infographics, and infographics are great for pinning on Pinterest. So if you're, if you're wondering which things can be embedded onto your site, if you go over to the link that I just posted in there, which is uh, the codex.wordpress.org slash embeds, scroll down to where the question is, OK, so what sites can I embed from? And you can take a look at the list of sites that you can actually embed from, including crazy places like Kickstarter, Funny or Die, Imager, SmugMug, all that stuff. Uh, almost YouTube's. anything except for Periscope. Yeah. That's not even listed on here. That's I, awesome. I think it would be awesome if um, Foo Video supported Catch.me links. That, that, that could be a good be opportunity cool. for him. That would be cool. Yeah, because he is. He's supporting Wistia now. Hmm. Yeah, it's another video service. Vimeo. Vimeo is another video that you can um, embed on your uh, on your site. Also, a long time ago, I used to use these graphics. You know, like in storybooks, where the first letter is like "Once upon a time" oh, and then drop yeah. cap. Yeah, drop caps. Those were so cool, but they're images, and then in the RSS feed, it doesn't read right. Mm -hmm. But I, I wonder if, like, remember that one time when um, Jacob was on talking about SV Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm I wonder if you made a drop cap out of that. Would it know that it's a, a letter? Well, there's would it read it, or would it still think it's an image? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. Cool. There's a couple ways to approach that. Like, you could have a, you could have some CSS that takes one of those images and you wrap, like a like a class or an ID or something around it, and you say like, this image is going to be a big C, yeah. but really it's the letter C and then A R, you know, yeah, 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 whatever. 
So it was um, a darkest the, story of light. There's a there's a great post over on um, on WP Beginner where they talk about how to do drop caps and what oh. are the, the best ways to go about it. So if you're looking to have like you know the the L and lorem ipsum on there, you could have it so it's above case or lower below the. I'm I'm horrible with the whole font idea. But the idea of having it, the image above it or below it or underneath it or around it, you can do all those sorts of fun things. So go take a look at that. There's some great posts about it, which is regarding the simple drop cap, which is the um, the link that I put in before. So you can go take a look at those. I mean, it's less work, but it's still it's still an image. It's still visually different, right? And that's the whole right. thing is, is wanting it to be um, different. Yeah, you know, and you can you can change the font, up. and you can do all sorts of really cool stuff with it if you wanted to go. Oh man, go I crazy. need this in my life. <laughs> I'm really no, because it looks cool, and you know what? It also looks more official. And um, the thing we forget about the power of the written word. The power, the written word is so powerful. You have sites like Snopes.com, right? Because people believe anything, right? That's so the you're truth. saying that people that want to write something that wants to be believable, they should use a drop cap? I'm just saying, like, it just looks like, it just the, the, feels, the it couple... feels professional. Like, it, just open a magazine. Like, now I wish I had a magazine around here. Open a magazine. That's a lot of times, uh, like, I think the New Yorker will, yeah. will have stories like that. It just feels, it has a, you know, like a, a nuance of, you know, kind of the old school and it feels more you know real i don't know we're just stuck in this digital world and um and i want my books back it's just it's cool i'm not really a reader either i just it's funny how i just sort of evolved into writing it wasn't really my thing like i said but i just i like the psychology of it you know because yeah. they always say why should you block and the number one answer is always to position yourself as an expert and yeah. why does that happen because people believe words that are written down and jason used a drop cap so obviously he knows what's up it just looks so <laughs> it does it cool. does look good it does look really good i might have to learn some css bah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you go look at this site this, this particular like this theme has it built in Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, oh, there's his opt-in monster. It took a couple minutes. That is so cool. Yeah. It just, it does, though. It looks it really does. cool. I can't but... help it. It's like swoonable. <laughs> hey, um, Dave Bell has a question for us about um, Periscope. Will Periscope ever be landscape? I don't it think is. there... I I don't yeah I mean it does it does support it but something like um, Snapchat will probably never be landscape. All you have to do is turn your phone, and then the person that's holding it, who's accustomed to looking at the content, goes, "Are you kidding me, dude?" Okay, fine. But the <laughs> problem, the weird part about Periscope is, and Facebook Live is like this too. You'll see the comments come up on your screen, right? You'll see right. the comments come up on your screen. So the oh comments God, are not coming up. So the reason, part of the reason is that they'll come up and then you can heart them or answer them. I'll say so and so says hi, blah blah blah, right? Right. So if your phone is like this, then you're not really. You only have a small amount of space. So. Again, it goes back to what we were saying. What is the purpose yeah. of the venue? It starts, it starts looking like, see, it, it does rotate it correctly. It looks weird, though. It looks yeah, well, it, it's trying to, um, you know, if you hold the phone sideways, yeah. at least it, it does do it. It's just kind of weird. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's something to know. I read in Pam and Marketing's SEO Roundup this week. Yeah. Facebook Live video oh, yeah. will come to the top of the feed when you are live and they get and the person gets pinged it's telling them hey jason's live he's making pancakes again yeah, come check yeah. it out exactly and it stays there huh so i mean no i mean it stays on facebook oh okay it's not like periscope yeah yeah, yeah. okay so if you really wanted to facebook live which i went to laguna beach i'm like well this is worth facebooking Here's this awesome view at Heisler Park. 
I watched and it. How I can suck it. I watched it. Suck it. <laughs> So what's, um, what, what's Pam Man's uh, marketing's? Uh... PamMarketing.com. No, no, no. But what was the thing that you were referencing? The, Her was SEO it? Roundup. SEO Did Roundup. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, so that was part of it. All, the other part was like the fact that uh, stupid Google got rid of their side ads. So it's only on the top. So uh... like almost everything ab above the fold is um, an ad now. Oh, and also, oh, cool. um, accelerated mobile pages, which is like some big controversy. And you and I have talked about it before. Yeah, we're actually looking at it for for my work. Yeah, but anyway, that's the answer to Dave's question. You can mm -hmm. do it, landscape. But I mean, again, it goes back to the audience. And this is why I used to say, like, uh, I was actually talking to one of our clients this week, and they go, "Can you repeat things on Twitter?" And I'm like, Twitter is where you can repeat things. Twitter has a high tolerance of repetition because it's like the stock market ticker that goes across the sc screen on CNN. You know, and so mm. you can repeat and repeat and repeat because with the 10, 10, 10 rule, if you have 10,000 followers, probably only 100 see it. Oh, yeah. That Scott Stratton came up with that. At any given time, only 10% of your followers are online. So if you oh. have 10,000 followers, that's 1,000. At any given time, only 10% of those will see it. That's 100. And if you get 10% response, that's awesome. So with 10,000 followers, getting 10 people to respond to you is epic. Hmm. That's the nature of Twitter because it goes by fast. And that's why everybody's saying, Twitter's not sticky, blah, blah, blah. We should change the way the reviews are. Well, that's why you need your lists. And I, I, I preach about it on top of my soapbox every million years right so if you go on your list i could go see what jason tucker tweeted four hours ago because you're on my smmoc list right so anyway um the thing is that um i, I used to say you don't book you two in a coffee house mm, yeah right? yeah because it's too much volume you two goes to the rose bowl they don't go to Starbucks. So okay. you have to consider yeah. the venue for what you're doing. And, and Twitter is this huge, mungus volume game like you two. Just keep, they just keep, we can't stop them from making music so, for some reason. They just keep put, putting songs out. <laughs> and sometimes they even install them into your devices. Hey, I'll without take I'll play a Nickelback over U2 any day. There's only two bands I'll turn my alternative uh, radio station off for: Red Hot Chili Peppers and U2. I'm just done with both of them. I You're can't, I can't them? take it. I can't take That's it anymore. Awesome. It's oversaturation. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sure there's opposing views. There's always opposing views. Oh, there but, is. There is. If you think about it, it makes sense. Right. No, I, I think it's I think it's smart. If if you're gonna have some type of thing to base everything off of, at least have something. Don't just go and like willy nilly start throwing things at the wall. I mean, at least have at least some type of idea of you know what what your users are doing and how to go about it the right way and yeah. um, that's where you have really good analytics and stuff using stuff like bitly and using stuff like buffer and using stuff like you know just to kind of figure out when's the best time to post things and why and how and, and actually the analytics in twitter are really good yeah they tell true. you your top card tweet so if you have your um, twitter cards enabled on your yoast seo plugin or you can use JM Twitter cards. I used to use that plugin. Then hmm. it will they will show you the top blog, the top links that have been tweeted and by whom. Explain the Twitter card thing. Okay, so Twitter, I, okay, so have you seen a tweet where it's like blah 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 the words a link and then below it is like a featured image and the snippet. Hmm. You're with me, right? Like just on yeah. just like on Facebook. Right, right. That's called a Twitter card. Now there's cards for advertising, and that's different. Okay. So on Yoast, you have Twitter cards enabled. Then you you can go into your Twitter analytics, and then it'll, you can go into Twitter cards. So like if I went into my analytics, uh, this is when you're like, 
damn it, Blab, why don't you have screen sharing right now? <laughs> if I yeah. go to my uh, Twitter cards analytics of um, Twitter, and I I can I can the I can look down, and my top link is BridgetWiller.com, changing careers at 42 with 3,000 impressions and 15 clicks. And then I can click on who who tweeted it. My number one tweet was from Hero Press, then me, then Josh Pollock. And it will show me the actual tweets. It will show me the actual uh, tweets. Okay. So so down below that, it will show your your influencers, top accounts that tweeted links to your content. Me, Hero Press, Josh Pollock, Karen Pearson, and Tracy Copy. And then you can, that's the top five. And then you can see the next ones Chef Ivan Flowers, Toyota Equipment, Carol Steven, WordCamp Atlanta. So it will tell you the people that are tweeting what kind of reach they had, how many clicks they had. And it's a good way for you to like either pander to them, thank them, however you want to word it, start tweeting some of their stuff, reciprocate. It's right there in Twitter, but you have to you have to enable Twitter cards. So there's a free plugin called JM Twitter Cards, and I used to use that. But Yoast does it. You just have to go yeah. into the social section of the settings and enable it. And it's apparently there's multiple Twitter card styles. Yeah, so it's kind of like you Facebook, want, where you want them with a big image on it. You I want mean, the obviously, one with the image. It, yeah. it's, if you have featured images on your blog on right. your WordPress site, yep. sorry. It's more than just a blog. You have featured <laughs> images on your WordPress, you know, web it's property. Consistent. How do you like them, Apple? Ooh, take you out. On your Using web property. On Using your WordPress enabled web property. If you have featured images available in your theme. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the reason why Yoast's um, uh, the images with the social share images are super important because you want to make sure that you have the right images in there at the right size yes. so that when they make the Twitter card, it will use the correct image. At the right orientation. Right. Think golden ratio. It's yeah. all there. No matter what it is, they're almost all support golden ratio. Yeah. Twitter, uh, Facebook is 1200 by 628. I think Matt Cromwell was telling me, and he said they all sort of fall in line with that. Um, but yeah, huh. I would say that, oh, Carol's asking, what's the best plugin for Twitter cards? I would say Yoast. Yep. Because you really don't want a billion plugins doing a different things. And when I first did uh, Riggins um, Construction's website um, last year, uh, I had uh, I had a um, XML sitemap. I had Google Analytics. I had a JM like, Twitter cards, like and all of that got all of it got replaced by Yoast. The free version of Yoast, yep. no less. Yep. And I really like Yoast. Um, they had a little bit of kerfuffle when they changed their snippet editor. So their latest version changed it back, sort of. But I like it. It's great. I don't yeah. I like their snippet editor. I don't I don't I don't really know why. I think I think that was out. more of the approach where they just were like, so that changed and everyone just said, well, Yoast, obviously, update. So they update and then their 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 clients are like, what the heck is this? Like, where's the boxes to oh, fill in the blanks? Different. You just click in there. But anyway, yeah, the boxes are back. <laughs> Rest assured, people, the Yoast snippet editor boxes are back. But people are dumb and they freak out and they, they, they want to know why why did everything change? With my new job, I've spent hours in those snippet editor boxes. <laughs> Crafting copy for snippets. Nobody so, copy so, what's ever your, read. so what's your guys' approach like as a company? What's your approach to either educating the client or you're the one doing it to getting the right image in the right aspect ratio in the right size? We're doing like, it. I know, but are you guys using like Photoshop actions to like spit it out? Is somebody opening up Photoshop with a huge oh. file and cropping out the pieces that they need? Like what's what's your well, approach? Well for our own self. Usually Matt makes something in Photoshop for okay. our own blogs, for givewp.com or WordPress. But for the client work that we do on the agency side, yeah, it's um, Bridget or we outsource. Um, or, with, it's, or it's Bridget and Canva? No, we ha <laughs> yeah, Bridget and Canva or we outsource with a graphic designer. Okay. We have a third-party graphic designer who like does AI and whatever else. Nice. Um, yeah, we outsource that. But yeah, everybody knows... 
And then, you know, with our advertising, you know, all those, every single ad platform wants their own sizes. Everybody and their mom has their own sizes. So, right. Yeah. Our, our graphic designer makes all those. But yeah, yeah. definitely Yoast. Yoast is like, I can't believe how much power is in the free version of Yoast. I don't even know why anybody pays for it. It's just funny that you have you have some clients that you show them all this stuff and they're like, okay, this all makes sense now. And then they write their blog post and they, they spend all this effort writing the blog post. And then when they're done, they're like, I don't want to do any extra stuff. I already spent all this time writing the blog post. You're like, I know, but you want people to share this at some point, right? Image and they're inject. Like, That's well, why yeah. you want image inject. Image inject? Remember that plugin I told you about that we I reviewed? Hmm. It, it adds a meta box in the WP uh, editor, and then you just search Creative Commons on Pixel oh, Day and Flickr. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then you yeah. can choose whether it's inside the post or as a featured image. I do that all day long at my own <laughs> blog. <sighs> yeah, Image Inject is like a light. Image Inject and Canva. Now, Canva does have. Canva does have a Pixabay, plugin. Pixabay, right? No, Canva has a plugin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was the one that yet. told you about yes, that. you told me that. No, I'm giving you credit. Don't worry. I'm, <laughs> not trying to be a, I'm not trying to be a WordPress expert or anything. I'm just saying. I haven't reviewed it yet because I've, I'm still in love with Image Inject and we're still dating. So I feel like I should give them, you know, a lot of love before I leave them because if Canva's if Canvas anything like it, I think it is, I'll never use Image Inject again. Sorry. I love Canva. <laughs> but uh. so so the thing is, is that should people still be put, should people still spend the time and effort to put text on top of the images if they want to? Yes. To kind of, so the thing is, is if you're doing that with like Image Inject, can you, you put can't. the text? Yeah, that sucks. That's why you need that. Canva. I, that, yeah. I just want to have fun with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I understand. I I'm not going to be able to use it ever again. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> because here's the thing. A lot of times the image is going to speak. Okay, you should be picking an image that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, let's just say that, right? Yeah. So, um, like uh, Josh Pollock wrote a post for us about A-B testing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, crap. What am I going to pick? Oh, a switch. Ah, right? so nice. I searched, I searched Flickr and I found, I oh, Unsplash is my other favorite. Unsplash. Oh, yeah, Unsplash There's is nothing good. there. There's nothing there. But, but I found a Creative Commons and I found a really old bitchin' looking switch. And um, so Matt's going to Photoshop that up but yeah so you you need to pick something in the image whatever the image is right or 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 be you know like a photographer and start taking picture pictures of random stuff you can do that too i yep. take a lot of my own pictures but uh the image should reinforce what you're talking about it shouldn't just be some random sunset that doesn't make any sense right yeah <laughs> so and then you have your title and a lot of times your title is what really Google wants. Mm. So if you have a backup title, the one you really wanted or a call to action, you put right. that on the image. So then when you share it on Twitter or Facebook, you have your headline, you have the text on the image that's a call to action and you have the snippet. You have so many right. ways to persuade them to click Click, yep. click, and share, and then buy whatever our, we're selling. Yep. Sorry, huh. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> my my friends over at um at at the site um nomad nomad dot pictures they yeah. actually have a, a really great um collection of photos over there. So they're they're all rights free and everything. You can really? use whatever you want. Yeah. The second photo that's on there of those little like weird berries, those that's a photo I took at my at my mom's house. Oh, cool. Oh, these are rad. Yep. Ooh, I like the books. See, that's the thing, is sometimes and 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 actually Carol and I talk about this a lot. Sometimes the images take longer. Yeah. You no, know that's your yeah. one chance. You know, that's your billboard image when it's shared on social. When when people look at your blog post, that's what they see. That image is is your is your hook. 
It's mm -hmm. the chorus of your song and it better be good or nobody's even going to read it. That's the problem. Like everybody says, oh, the headline, da, da, da. the headline has to be good. Of course, the headline has to be good. Right. But it also has to be a good melody, you know. <laughs> Roxanne, you don't have to turn on the red light. How many how many years have we been singing that? 30, 35 years? Yeah, the lights aren't even red anymore. It's a totally different color now. I know. Nobody <laughs> even knows that she was a hooker anymore. Nobody knows what a red light is, right? right. The, the meaning is totally different, you know. <laughs> so, but, but that scene in 48 Hours where Eddie Murphy is singing that in the jail. Right. Oh, my God. What a good scene. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> oh, you know, on the red light. anyway, so um, that's but that's what you remember, right? If mm -hmm. you think about it for music, you remember the hook of the song, either the chorus or the beginning of it or whatever. Yeah. And it, for jokes, it's the punchline. Right. Okay, so that is your in and it's, it's yeah. got to grab you. And how many seconds do you have? Because there's so much volume. Just flying by. There's so much volume. It's got to make you stop. You know, it's got to make you stop and say, yeah, I want to eat that burger. I'm going to stop here. You know what? You know what? Lately, um, those tasty videos. Oh, or yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Where the camera's above it. Those yep. are mesmerizing. Yeah, I find myself just scrolling on Facebook and just watching. I don't even cook anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put make jalapeno popper cheeseburger. Yeah, right. When am I gonna do that? It's not happening. I just watch them. Sometimes I'll just watch <laughs> the next one and the next one and the next one because they're so like visually appealing right. that you're just going, wow, you know. So you just gotta think, think about that. What image is gonna strike or you know make. Well, it's going to grab you, right? It's going to grab you. And if you're not sure, then, you know, you could do some A-B testing and geek out over it. But um, <laughs> the, the images, they take so much time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they take longer than writing it. Yeah. That's, that's why I think, I think that a lot of the places that are on pages will get replaced. A lot of, pa a lot of places on, on websites that have sliders will get replaced by, embedded images or embedded videos that will just sit there and play because people will want to watch one of those videos, but they're not going to sit there and watch the first, second, third, fifth, 12th slide on one of those, you know, one of those sliders. Like no one's going to watch the revolution slider and just watch all these things no. go by, but they'll totally sit there and watch the, you know, the construction of a hamburger or something. Yeah, and if you're, you know, if you're a barbecue place, you can sit there and have the camera sitting there and it'll show, you know, the bun, the this, the that, do, 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 have it all build up. And then the person's like, oh my gosh, why aren't I there already? Like, what's it's, going on here? It's because it's relevant, you know? Yeah. yeah. And also, um, Carol brought up in the chat, which I totally forgot about, about the writing on the image. Oh, you yeah. Be careful about that if you think you're going to sponsor your posts on Facebook. Now, hmm. for, the, for the rest of the world, it doesn't matter. Right. Facebook will not allow you to have more than 20% of the area having text. 20% of the area. So if you have an image that's this big, no more than 20% of it can have text on it, or they will reject your sponsored post. They will reject your ad. So what's it, what's it I guess, the, like, what's it trying to stop? They don't want you to just write a bunch of stuff in there. Remember when everybody's cover photos were full of text? Remember that? Yeah, true. Featured, featured author and ent entrepreneur, you know, Fortune 500 speaker, speaker at South by Southwest, uh, oh. total promoted being, not <laughs> coffee drinker, craft beer curator. So, like, so for instance, like the like the the image that I used for for the blab today. Like, would that, like, is that using up that much? I, if I use a thinner font, am I using less? Like, what's the... <laughs> well, it looks fine on Facebook. I don't think it would have let you, I don't think it would have let you um, so like sponsor that image... it. It wouldn't have let you boost it on WP Watercooler's Facebook page. Uh, it's too okay. much text. But it looks cool, and we all like it. Right. But, but Facebook has to be like that because of all the people that, that just are just... Huh. That are out of control with their words. So is that why they made it so that those those posts can be updated with newer graphics by going up to little the little arrow and Probably. clicking on it and refreshing it? 
Oh, probably. But here, here's here's something I, I will say about boosting a post. Yeah. If you boost a post, you can't edit it anymore. Oh. If you do boost a post and your ad gets approved and you made uh -huh. a spelling mistake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did that once. You did? Really? I learned the hard way. That you don't have to. Was it a lot of money? Was it a little bit? No, it's just, I, we just told him, I just said, um, well, Devin <laughs> said you spelled that on wrong. Well, I didn't spell it wrong. It's just I capitalized add and on. Uh, and it's not capitalized both. Just one is capitalized. And then yeah. so we can stop the boosting. Okay. We just no more boosting. We can turn right. it off. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. can't edit it. You can't pause the boost, uh -huh. edit your copy, and then re- because they already approved your ad. So that means you're probably going to end up retargeting the people that original that already saw that that ad, and then yeah. you just wasted it again, maybe? Yeah, you wasted it. You wasted it. I mean, that it's stinks. not like you're spending a ton of money. Just make sure you proofread. I mean, if we're doing disclaimers here, right? Might as well talk. if we're talking about Facebook ads, that's what I know about boosting a post, and Carol was right. And I've yeah. had a ton rejected because there's too much text on it. Huh. I had so, no idea. But then again, Eric, I think I post, I boosted like two posts ever in my life. It like works I, for some people. It never really works for me, or I suck at my targeting, or both. Hmm. I mean, I like. I'll, it's like I might get likes, but I yeah. never get clicks. And I don't hmm. want to like. I want to click. I want you to watch my video. Spend forty seconds. It's right. not like blab. It's like two hours of your life. So that's but, what you should put on the ad. You should say maybe you should like. Like share this thing instead of clicking it or clicking like. Like you should have little arrows down there just no. saying like. Yeah, remember you weren't allowed to do that either <laughs> right. on your cover photo. <laughs> yeah, Facebook really. I know why they did it because MySpace. Right. MySpace. Remember what a disaster that place was. I yep. can't even believe it's still alive. That's how. That's how everyone learned about the marquee tag. <laughs> it's just no. Yeah. There's so much to know about that MySpace. So that if so if your blog post looks like MySpace, you'd put too many images in. That would be the answer. Yep. Oh, so you could put GIFs. Yeah, true. But you know, uh, oh, we didn't talk about memes. Oh, we didn't. Yeah, that was one of the things. Yeah, memes are great if they resonate with your audience. Like I was talking to somebody about memes, and they were like, "Well, it's just image on a text." I go, no, that's not a meme. A meme is a joke. And a joke, it's like you're you're replacing the punchline. Like, you know when you do mad libs? Yep. Or when you're a little kid and you have a and you have a it has to be something that's pop culture related. Mm -hmm. And you gotta use that meme font or it really isn't a meme. Right. Like to me, if you use a really nice font and it looks beautiful, has to be that's impact. not a meme. If you're not using impact, you're doing it wrong. I feel like that's what makes it funny. You know, like a slapstick comedy. If you don't slip on the banana, <laughs> it's not funny. You, right. That's part of the formula that makes slapstick funny. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, right. that's the whole point of it. You know, you wouldn't expect that in a Shakespeare play. So it's again, appropriateness of the venue and the expectations of the audience that's the theme of this whole show using things that are appropriate to your, the expectations of your audience right okay so yep. a meme is supposed to be funny right. so like i don't always go on blab but when i do you know <laughs> so then you fill it out so it's a commercial it was a commercial for dos Equis. Mm -hmm. The most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, it's Dos Equis, you know. And so, so it's I don't always blank, but when I do, blank. So it's like right. a Mad Lib. So you have to follow the form, and then, or the the um, or the Willy Wonka one. It's one of my favorites. Oh, really? That how, tell me how that's working out for you. You know that one, right. or, or the one with Bordeaux where he goes, one does not simply. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> You exactly. Know, <laughs> go up to Mordor or whatever. The <laughs> right. Is. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you just, you got to make sure that your joke is right. Like, uh, what, I was talking to Josh Pollock a couple of times. We were talking about his ingot 
A-B testing plugin, mm -hmm. which is coming out with a light nugget version. You can get Ooh. it from in.hq right now hmm. if you give them your email. But um, anyway, uh, so I made him that little crazy, you know, that all the things meme where he's yeah, going yeah. like, so I said, A-B test all the things. So it was funny because I knew he would appreciate a meme. If I sent that to my mom, she'd be like, what is this? Hmm. This is stupid. What are you even talking about? What is that <laughs> ugly character? Or like the Wapu that everybody loves. Right. It's it 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 it's like an inside joke into your culture. Your culture has to get it. So I would only use a meme on a blog that had an audience that appreciated memes. Like WordPress people. I mm. wouldn't do it necessarily for a business, though I did once when I was doing um auto repair Twitter. Yeah. Um, I did. I, I don't always get towed, but when I do, I towed a British four by four because that was the story of my life. So until I got a car, <laughs> until I got my Fiesta, I was always getting towed a British four by four. So we, you know, you can if, but you have to be a business that has that sense of humor yeah. that has to be okay with you. There's you no, know, it's not going to be a lawyer's means. office, right? Right. I don't see any Wapu Wapu themes or memes though. No, I'm not know. memes. I just mean like <laughs> I know. I'm looking for both of them. I'm trying to mash all this together. Yeah, but they have the Wapu and the people just put whatever inside right. of it. Right. Yeah. You That's know, cool. like uh those Wapu Uno cards David Bissett. Yep. Shared on GitHub for from work at Miami. Those are so cool. I don't even like the Wapu. I think it's kind of ugly, but I'm not into Japanese anime or whatever. Yeah. He's but even on the Stanley it Cup. It goes on you. He's even on the Stanley Cup. Come on. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, again, it's appropriateness of your audience yep. and messaging. So I don't that? always dream, but when I do, I dream of Jeannie. That's funny. Oh my gosh. I missed a lot of the chat because I was on a rant. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. Too much. We need somebody in this open seat. Yeah. We got like 15 minutes left. Who wants to hop <laughs> oh in and say hi? I'll I even can't believe how much I talked today. I'm so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Make it up for those other nine guests. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a water cooler show. Oh, man. Pixabay. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, Pixabay. Jamal doesn't want to come on. I know you have good lighting. You want to tell us about your square? Jam Jamal was on when I was testing, and he got this cube light. It's literally Ooh. this big, and it gives you the most amazing lighting. I totally huh. need it. It's $79 on Amazon.com. Wow. Oh, he's driving. How are you listening to this and you're driving? Don't get pulled over, dude. I have the cheap version of that. Oh, cool. This is what they stick in the uh, the drinks at Disneyland. <laughs> Does it? Oh. It changes funny. colors. Did you ever go to that secret club? Club 33? Yeah, I've been to Club 33. I've only seen it from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I've been uh, three or four times now. Wow. Yep. Is it worth it? Um. Yeah. I haven't been to the latest um, incarnation of it. Yeah, I haven't been since 2010 to the Disneyland. Oh, uh, we just went recently, and it's kind of spendy now. Yeah, I'm not a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind going at least one more time just to go check out the new setup because I, I haven't seen the new setup yet. I think maybe when Star Wars is done, oh, like a year yeah. after Star Wars is done. And the crowds die down a little bit. Yeah. You know, they're having like, they're, they're changing they're their pricing model. Yeah. <laughs> they're not only are the, is it more expensive, but if more people are there, they're going to start charging you more. Uh huh. Like the roads? Or like uh, Uber. <laughs> oh my gosh. I started watching CSI cyber and um, in the first season, somebody gets killed by a fake Uber driver. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I used to think. Why wow. would you get in a car with some stranger you don't even know? I was unaware that there is a CSI cyber. Yeah, no joke. it's okay. 
It, no joke. I, I had to go look that. it up. It's no CSI Miami. I had to go look it up. And then I'm like, oh, it came out in March of 2015. I Good just, job, Jason. I just started watching it. I don't even know if I like it yet. I'm I just in between shows right now. I don't get I don't get um I don't get live TV. I don't either. I'm that's why I'm just now watching it from 2015. Oh, I read okay. it from Netflix. And you can't gotcha. stream that. You have to get the actual discs. Wow, they still do that? Yeah, three at a time, baby. Huh. I had no idea. I, I don't get because that's how I watch Downton Abbey. Oh. And all the CSIs. Huh. And uh, Hawaii Five O, which I actually ended up like. I like crime dramas. Ah. Uh. Crimes have a mystery. Otherwise, I get too bored. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. No more questions? I guess that's it. This place much. got all dried out. Check that out. Seven um, people left. They're like, Bridget talks too much. I'm never watching this show again. I got excited because I knew stuff. It wasn't all JavaScript this time. So how about this? How about we end <laughs> the show right now? I'll turn off the recording, and then people can hop in because they're probably scared because the red light's on. How about that? <gasps> You don't have Sound to good? turn off the red light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Bridget, how do people find you on the interwebs? They can find me at BridgetWillard.com. Nice. You can find me, JasonTucker.us. This show is part of WP Water Cooler Network. You can go to WPWaterCooler.com slash WP Blog. Blab. WP Blab. <laughs> WPWaterCooler.com slash WP Blab. And you can go check out all the stuff that's over there. If you like this particular episode and you're watching this thing on YouTube, please go and click the little thumbs up button, the little like buttons. If you are really, really interested in it and you really liked it, make sure you hit the share button because I'd love to see. And I love seeing people share this stuff on Twitter and stuff. So make sure you go click on those links there and let us know how you liked it. Um, there's feedback over on our website. You can go over there and do that. And you can also check out uh, DE Comments, which is the commenting system that we're using over on WP Water Cooler. So if you want to leave a comment, you can leave a comment using that system and check it out. That's about it. Bridget, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Folks, you have a good rest of your Thursday or whatever day you're watching this. Bye. <laughs>